Hi, and welcome to the Dummies Guide to Podcasting, a panel about hints, tips, and tricks in starting and running a podcast and maybe listening to them. Uh, hi, I'm Avon from 20 Sided Adventures. Pleasure to meet everybody. I'll be your moderator. Uh, if you guys would like to introduce yourselves, panelists. Not everybody at once. Uh, this is Dwayne from Awful <laughs> Stupid. Uh, I was DM for Campaign 1. I'm a player in Campaign 2. We have a very dumb D&D podcast. I'm also on another podcast called Global Gazette, which is also a very dumb podcast uh, where we just shoot the shit for 30 minutes. Um, and to the right of me is my good friend Adam. Adam, introduce yourself. I'm not on the right on your screen, man. Or on my screen. Um, yes, I am Adam <laughs> Don't tell me what's on my screen, Adam. <laughs> I am Adam DeWeese. I am from uh, the DM for Halfway to Heroes and One Shot Onslaught to D and D Five E podcast. I am a member of that uh, aforementioned um, good podcast, as uh, Dwayne pointed out. Global Gazette is pretty dumb, but it's a lot of fun. Um, and then a fourth podcast that's as soon to be released, a Monster of the Week podcast called Roll for Weird. Too many podcasts. I guess I'll go next. I am Seda with the Nerd Asylum. I am a part of two different, three, three, yes, three different podcasts, uh, all of which are D and D podcasts. One of them I DM for, two of them I play in, and yeah, I keep those running as the editor. Uh, I am. Of those? Oh, shit. Seriously? I edit two of the three. Okay. Uh, I'm Lance. I am the DM for 20 Sided Adventures, and I'm also the editor for those episodes as well. Uh, I'm not insane, and I only have one podcast <laughs> right now. So, See, right now, it's addicting. I'm waiting for that opportunity, you know. Um, hi, guys. My name is Jay. I'm from Adriac Studios. I used to have a podcast called Shadows Playlist with, through Valencia College Radio, and I currently do not have anywhere. One of my team members from that podcast is actually in the audience right now. His name is The Amazing K-Man, and it's nice to be here. So for any uh, audience members, feel free to ask questions during the panel. Uh, I'll be taking some as we go along if it seems like it matches up with whatever the discussion is. And at the end, there will be about 10 to 15 minutes for more questions. Uh, so here we go. Why start a podcast? Why did you guys start your own podcast? Because we're crazy. I'm conceited and love the sound of my own voice. So I just make content for people to listen to. For me, it was... Um... Mostly started as a way to get uh, my oldest brother into a campaign with me. And then we were having a lot of fun and we had some equipment anyway. So we mostly were planning on just kind of putting it out there for ourselves and uh, just kept doing that and it snowballed from there. Jokes, jokes aside, it was more of a um, we think we're funny and we think that other people might find us funny too. And we realized that there is a niche for people who like to listen to podcasts and just wanted to try to help entertain people. Our bad, so our bust. Kind of the same as um, it actually started out as a one shot. And we're like, wow, we're funny. We should make this into a podcast. So we did. Um, mine started off as a bet, um, <laughs> which I lost and had to okay. go on the school radio show. And it was actually with my podcasting professor. He's like, you know what? You should go on to the radio you're good with talking to people and you like music and we need someone for a rock radio show. We don't have one and we need one more show so we can actually get funding for, you know, the club. And I'm like, nah, I, this isn't for me. Next thing I know, I'm on three seasons. 
And I'm now, unfortunately, done with the show because I'm graduating this semester, but I am super excited I got to do as much as I did. Can I ask a question? Because I, I have been out of school a long time, but I heard the, the combination of words podcasting professor. That's a thing now I'm hearing, right? Like, yes, it's a um, class. Yes, there's a radio and podcasting class at my college because we're an arts and tech um, campus and we have that podcasting classes. Sick. Yeah, um, his name is John Keeley. He actually has his own podcast and he's actually really awesome. That's really cool. And as a podcasting professor, if he doesn't have his own podcast, that would be a problem. <laughs> yeah. But that's really cool. Well, I mean, he also works at a radio station, so. Well, we don't pay our teachers enough. That makes sense. Let's see. Um, what's the importance of knowledge on the topic of your podcast? I know most of us are TTRPGs, but let's go anyway. Well, I think it's extremely important. Um, Devin and I did a uh, pastor versus atheist podcast for a hot minute. Um, and it was very important to be knowledgeable on the the content, right? Um, you know, he, he being a pastor, that's very important. He knows what he's talking about the scripture and me being an atheist, if I'm going to uh, fight it with fact or, or, you know, my argument coming prepared is super important, much in kind being a DM or a player, uh, you need to have your character sheet. You need to know the rules of the game. There's nothing worse than a podcast. You know, like I've been in the games where people are like, ah, oh, what is that move? Like, burr, burr. I don't really want to hear that in most podcasts, right? So cut that out or already know it. That helps move it along. Like I'm here for the story and your banter in general. So like if you're arguing over rules and it's funny, great. But if you're flipping through pages for 15 minutes or, or doing a D&D &D Beyond search, um, you should take that out unless there's humor or validity to why that's there. So, like, coming pre prepared is important, I think. I think also the subject cool. matter is going to uh, play a part in that because, again, that Global Gazette doesn't really have a subject matter so much, so we can't really be experts on that show. Really? Um, I disagree. Yeah. <laughs> I am yeah, an expert on that show. That's true. He would. He is our go-to expert. Um, but yeah, for tabletop RPGs, you want to really at least know the uh, basic rules so that you're not spending uh, 45 minutes in an hour-long episode looking up rules. For the music side of when I did my podcast, it was kind of hard to so much so be an expert, quote-unquote, for music that you got requests for. Um, but for certain songs and certain bands, I was able to do more research on pre before the show and make long playlists versus um, on request days, not knowing what the song is and having to figure it out on the spot. Yeah, I think to talk about that, right? Like at that point, being a, a subject or, or an expert on your subject, it's more like being prepared to roll with the punches, being loose and flexible. Like, you know, we all play an improv game. So knowing your rules, but also rolling with the punches, um, a lot of yes and helps, like move things along. Uh, to me, I think you can strive to be an expert in at least that, right? Like getting better with like going with the flow and adjusting the fly. So guys, I don't do well with radio silence. Like I'm, I'm not going to lie. So if like I will fill. <laughs> <of silence. laughs> well, I mean, you I guys, you guys summed it up. Yeah, you summed it up really well. So there's, I don't really feel like I have anything to add to that. Helpful for me if you just say I agree. Let's move on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, all right, moving on. Uh, I can do that. Sounds great. What about you, Lance? that just you know coming prepared uh like with space days i i know i knew nothing about space and now i know so much about space <laughs> so like <laughs> you 
yeah, just doing that that research and it, it makes everything more fun, I think, for your players when you you do your research and you have that stuff prepared and you can surprise them. Uh, you provide with, the level of with your knowledge, yeah. Plus, they think you're smart afterwards, so that's kind of a bonus, you know. Except when you're running a module and they skip an entire chapter. Yeah, we don't talk about that. <laughs> that's that's, that's why fun. I do fake things and they can't skip chapters. <laughs> Because exactly. every chapter they do is the next one. <laughs> to tackle equipment. Um, so what equipment do you need? Suggestions for high-end, low-end, free stuff? And maybe setting up your space in center. So I was using a wireless headset with a microphone. And I didn't realize how garbage that sounded until one of my friends got me this rig that is on this fancy arm and everything. And I listened to that. So I think having, and it, it was, it was a hundred dollars for this rig, which was amazing of my friend to do that for me, but to put some money into it, I think is a little important for your recording equipment because you don't want to sound like you're 10 feet away from your microphone when you're trying to record for somebody to listen to, to enjoy listening to it. Yeah. Uh, I echo that um, completely. You know, there are, there are levels of um, equipment you can get into uh, and I don't, I don't think I'll hit all of them because I want everybody else to have an opportunity. But uh, Jen, she was our audio mancer, who um, is the stars and moon of my life personally, um, recommended a dynamic mic um, and a small um, audio interface. And seriously, like I, I literally have a fan going right now in a small office. Like you can see how small my office is, right? Um, I have a fan going. You can't hear it. You can't pick it up. Um, a dynamic mic, if you don't have an ideal recording space, is worth the extra money. And I say that because the cost difference between a dynamic mic and a good snowball is like sixty bucks. Put in your total at like one forty ish, one fifty. Like that will help so much. Like we don't all have perfect recording environments. Having a dynamic mic will stop that because I just I move my mic out to here and you can I'm I'm so much more quiet already. So like the further that goes, so any background noise just gets drowned the fuck out very easily. I think it also uh, want to know how much you're planning on investing into the show. Like I said, when we first started, we didn't really, we weren't planning anybody to listen. So we were just doing uh, the bare minimum. We all sat around uh, one table played during that time and we actually went through like four different sets of mics that uh we would try and we had no idea about any kind of um audio recording at all so we didn't know what we were looking for but we were we knew when we would listen back we we're like okay we can't even listen back to that ourselves so um you're we all sitting around a different table uh, we did eventually get uh, like one audio interface and then everybody their own separate dynamic mic. Um, and that cut back like tons of the echo. Um, but obviously for that um, one interface, the H6 Zoom, it was something like $350 or something like that. But other than that, if everybody has like their own way of like a laptop or something to everybody plug in their own, microphone you wouldn't need that interface um yeah right now kind of went through stages of different equipment and now everybody like Dwayne, have we record remotely now and everybody has their own uh, dynamic microphone that um like right now this one is a road podcaster uh, that one doesn't need an interface um on my set i usually use is a road pro uh procaster which needs an audio interface and then two of our members still use um, Audio Technica. It's AT twenty one hundreds. They're dynamic microphones that are actually like sixty dollars, and 
Um, it's really, really good. I know a lot of different podcasts that also use those. So it's um, a pretty highly recommended like, like uh, entry microphone. I, I love them still. Uh, Don't mind me. I'm just Googling that pod, that microphone. <laughs> Uh, even it's like 100. the the surrounding area, like you where you're where you're recording, um, can play a big difference in in your your audio. Like we we just moved, and my office is very bare, so I have to edit out a lot of echo. So uh, filling your like having kind of an enclosed space with things on the wall and things on the floor and on the ceiling, it's going to help any echo. And also, uh, get yourself a nice chair because sometimes your squeaks can come through. I love you, dragon. Oh, all the squeaky oh, chairs I've had to edit out. <laughs> oh, mouse uh, clicks. Keyboard oh, typing. No. Mm. Clearing of throats. All the times where you hear like my when my coworkers throwing bouncy balls on the table as I'm trying to introduce a song and I'm like, we're live, please don't. <laughs> and trying to edit that out afterwards was, oh my gosh, that was the worst. Yeah, James, I love all you. Over. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're the best. Thank you. And then, and then you get into the editing software part of it. I mean, Audacity is free and it works, mm. but it is not to to in my experience, uh, we use Reason. Actually, we use Reason, Reason Light. Yep, Reason I Light is love, real good. I love Reason. It is the best to me. I know every, it's not the best for everybody, but it is my favorite thing compared to Audacity. <laughs> it's so much easier to use. But you get what you pay for. Yeah, I... Audacity's free noise compression is like unrivaled almost. Um, Ging turned us on to Reason Light as well to edit um, Global Gazette, and I mean it's really really good. You're you're right. It just doesn't do noise compression without third party plugins, uh, not compression reduction, noise reduction, um, and Audacity's is like scary good. Um, the best software I've ever used though is stupid expensive. It's Adobe's Audition. And that's there. There is no rival, in my opinion, for that. Uh, I'm just not willing to pay twenty dollars a month for it. It goes back to that: you get what you pay for. Yeah. Sorry, I cut somebody off. I don't know who. You're okay. Um, on the hardware side, for us, it was we got lucky. And we had a, a studio already set up for us at school, so we didn't really have to put anything into it. Um, all we really had to do was tell them what we needed, and they already had it. Basically, we had some JBL mics and um, an interface and a Mac, and we just ran with it in XLR. Um, as for uh, audio software. We kind of just used whatever the school had. I don't remember the name, but I preferred Audacity over what we used because it wasn't very user friendly. Yeah, that makes a big difference, uh, the interface and just being able to pick it up intuitively. Editing will be the hardest thing you do if you have to edit in the podcast until you get used to it. There's so much to learn. It's very daunting. I got lucky. Mine was all audio. We had no video to edit. So that was, I think that was the easiest part for me. Oh, oh yeah, for sure. Editing video sounds like a nightmare on top of audio because like if you want to clip something out, you now have to clip out video with it. Like, nah, fuck that. Hard pass. I'm not an expert. Sounds terrible. <laughs> Let's see. We've got... I guess, would you consider artwork as part of your equipment, or would you put that under publicity? Artwork Both. is definitely marketing, I think. Oh, no, go ahead. I was just saying both. Um, because it's nice to have. It's not necessary, 
except for having like a logo or some something that people can look at and go, hey, that's hoarding around. That's Rage of Nerds. That's lawful stupid stuff. Um, so you're you are right in terms of it being marketing, but I would definitely put that as part of equipment for starting out. Um, just if if nothing else, just the logo that you're going to use on Podbean or whatever you're going to put your podcast out onto. Yeah, and that doesn't have to cost money um, either because artwork is expensive, um, especially good artwork, right? Uh, But for like Global Gazette, we like went super cheap and they there's like software out there that you can pay like five bucks and use their stock resources to make a decent logo like you were saying, like just something to be eye catchy slash, you know, out there. So it doesn't have to be expensive to get started. Be a nice segue into pub- pub- bleh, publicity, <laughs> social media, and more. Uh, what, well, I guess, what platforms should we be using? Uh, I know we, I can point out some websites, but I'll let you run off with it first. We used to do, um, when we first started out, we were actually uh, most active on Instagram, which I think is kind of weird for a podcast. I don't see a lot of other podcasts uh big on instagram but actually would go live before we did all of our recording sessions and that's where um actually i think that's where dragon bait even found us um and now he's been an active member in our discord and actually on roll for weird with me the gm so like us going live on uh instagram um you know weekly and uh we were very active on posting different pictures from uh recording sessions and things it actually grew pretty quick and i think that also came with me not really knowing how to work twitter uh during that time i still don't really know how to work twitter but um i think it seems like twitter's probably a way to spread the fastest because retweeting and things like that but again i am terrible at social media so um, that's just my two cents on how we started to grow kind of um i, I, I mean i agree with that no go ahead you first no i talk way too much please you <laughs> <laughs> uh we use primarily facebook to advertise um We do use Twitch, but to a lesser extent, to my knowledge. I'm not the one who posts the stuff out. Um, Our wonderful, I I call him our leader. He doesn't see himself like that, but I do, is uh, Joseph Temis. And he is the one that does all of the marketing for all three of our podcasts. So, yeah. I would consider Joe my leader as well, so don't don't worry about it. Same. Not alone there. No, I mean, you talk about social media, it's very important. Um, It is arguably the most important thing you'll do outside of actually producing content because if nobody knows you exist, then fuck, what's the point, right? Um, I'm not a social media expert. Uh, That would be Shane. He does most of that. He has the best eye for it. He knows the SEO. But what we all agreed upon is when doing social media and getting your name out there, the best thing you can do is network, right? Doing things like this, communicating with other shows, getting on their shows, getting them on your shows, making a new show together. Then you're like getting both audiences together, which only spreads your word. Like you could, you could do what we do and just start a charity drive. Like that gets attention. Um, like not that we did that for marketing purposes. We just wanted to do something better, but like, that helped us uh, inherently explode um, because we were doing something good. So shamelessly go give to charity, right? Because everybody likes that and you're doing a good thing. So it's, it's a win-win. Even like non-technology based advertisements, like we, we made uh, some business cards and dropping them off at all the local bookstores, taking them to conventions, um, <clears throat> slipping them into D&D books at Barnes & Noble. Like, you <laughs> uh, you can get your name out there in, in many different ways. And 
but social media is definitely a big go-to. Um, I didn't even know, like, I never thought I would get a Twitter account before starting this podcast. Sometimes I still forget that I have a Twitter account. <laughs> so what we don't do is like an old man, you know, I kind of feel it. Uh, but yeah, no, just, uh, we don't post as much as we should, but even just posting every now and then and doing little posts, it, people see it like, Um, for us at the college, we kind of just posted flyers around the campus. We didn't really have access to social media on campus. They had it blocked. So we had to get a little creative on how we marketed things. We had to do posters, like um, at events, we would be like, hey guys, we ran up, stole the microphone from the announcer, and like, hey guys, this podcast is going on in 10 minutes. See you guys there. And then we ran, and then people were like, why are they stealing the microphone again? But, hey, there's a podcast. Sometimes you just have to get creative how you market things, especially when social media is blocked on school. I, I just stand on my roof and shout at the top of my lungs <laughs> to go listen to Lawful Stupid. Um, I feel like that has worked. I don't have evidence. It does live out in the country, though, so... There's no one that lives I around have like, them. No, that's, that's not fair. I've got like four to six neighbors right next to me in my little uh, cul-de-sac thing. I don't imagine D&D is their thing, but it will be if I keep shouting. Or the they hate, will come they hate Dwayne. Angry. They hate him. <laughs> Adam is my neighbor. <laughs> I, I can't get him to stop with this lawful stupid podcast every Sunday night. 3 a.m. they come out. It's good release time. What about podcasting platforms? Um, but let's just start at that general topic, and then I'll narrow it down. Well, we use... Yeah, yeah, I know um, we can use Podbean. We use uh, Libsyn. Um, to be honest, I don't really know what made us choose that one when we were first um, starting out, but... Uh, we did, and we haven't really had any issues with it. So we use Lipson for um, all three of the shows that um, I like do the managing. I don't do the really any of the background stuff for Global Gazette. So I'll let uh, point out to Podbean for that one. I just say Podbean because when I when we were doing it, um, I I am I am super cheap when I can be, um, and it. Compared to all the other ones, you get unlimited storage. Um, and I didn't see the other ones offering that at the time. So it was like nine bucks, ten bucks a month for unlimited storage. And it had comparable features. Like that was the biggest one I looked at. Like a lot of them, I don't know about LipSync or any of them at this point. It's been three years since I've compared them. Um, it was none of them had, you just like, oh, you can store two gigs worth of episodes or, or whatever your cap was. And I was like, well, fuck that. It could have changed by now. We use, is there a limit uh, on lip sync? Uh, no, there is a unlimited method. Um, we were doing the limited one or the I, I I forget the storage space, but we were actually hitting that cap early on, mostly because we would like have so many issues with an episode, and then we would I would have to like take it down and like re-upload it again, and so I was hitting that limit, so that's why I had to for the unlimited. We use Podbean, and one of the nicest features that it has is an auto-scheduler. So oh, you can yeah. schedule out your posts to be like, okay, so we've got, for example, I've got like 10 recordings ahead of where we're at for the current release that are all scheduled to come out every week, and we don't have to worry about it. Like, it's It's so nice. I don't know a whole lot about other platforms, um, but I know that Podbean will broadcast to so many different places for you, which is really nice. I don't know if um, Lip Sync does that too. Yeah. 
Yep, I agree. Podbean, the the scheduler is is really nice when you've been frantically trying to edit and then you're going to be away for when like the the time is going to it's it's supposed to release. It's nice to have that like set it at 3 a.m. to release at 5 p.m. that next day. It's like okay, I don't have to worry about it because honestly, I'm getting old and I would forget. Before we found that scheduler, there were epi- there were release days that were completely skipped because the person that was supposed to do it completely forgot. <laughs> and it was like the next day we're like, weren't we supposed to have an episode release yesterday? Or like it'd be like a week later, like, wasn't there supposed to be one last week? It's like, oh no. Um, we use MixLR. It's similar to Podbean, but it has no video at all. It's literally just entirely auditory, and it's screen reader accessible. So that's why we chose that one, since um, I'm legally blind, and the school is like, hey, we have a choice of Podbean or MixLR. They're both the same price. They both have a limited storage. Which one do you guys want to use? And they had us try them both out, and my screen reader would not read Podbean to save my life. On the, the on the editor side, and I've tried three different screen readers with it, so we wound up with MixLR. That makes sense. Quite a lot of Podbeans and Stitchers and all that fun stuff. But what about iTunes and the importance of that? It's very important. If you're looking to grow your audience, I think um, the Apple Podcasts. I, I, the last time I looked it up, but the stat and the um, like percentage of users, podcast listeners that use that platform was uh, pretty massive. Um, I want to just pull a number out of my butt because I don't remember. But it, it was a huge it's chunk. Definitely, yeah. It's it's iTunes, Spotify, in that order. Um, for like popular podcasters for sure. So you want to make sure you're in iTunes. And the cool thing about iTunes, and this is this is really what the selling point of making sure you're important on iTunes, is a lot of these podcasters that you use, they reference the iTunes database anyways, right? Like I use Pocket Casts. That's what I use for my podcatcher. And it references iTunes. So if you're not in iTunes, it's not going to pick you up anyways, uh, not primarily. So like, that's the way to do that. It's, it is what it is. Very important. Just so you know, the number you were saying, it's 57% as of today. They updated it today. That's insane. That's more than I even thought. I thought it was like 40%. 40% is their um, download rate. I yep. mean, they did, they did prime, uh, make the market, so it makes sense. Uh, iTunes is is definitely a a big go to, and like I think we got most of our followers when we hit the new and noteworthy uh, list on iTunes. That's when our our views and everything really start to spike up. So like you you have that opportunity to get on like those lists, and that's when your your fan base is really going to increase, like your download rate. Um, but we're also on like little ones that I have no idea how to get onto, like iHeartRadio. Like, I, I have no idea what the listen rate on that one is, and somehow we got accepted onto that, and I don't, I think Kaz put in for that. Thanks, Kaz. So, you know, it, there's a bunch of podcatcher areas that you can be on, and the more, I think, the more you on, the more chance you have of getting out there and being listened to. iHeartRadio happens to pull from iTunes. There we go. Most of them do. Uh, Spotify is the one you have to manually submit to stay in there if you have a problem. Um, That one's pretty big. Um, But if you're in iTunes and you're, like, set up correctly, you're going to go to most places. So we talk about iTunes. I'm going to just branch off that. SEO is the most important thing you can do for your podcast. Um, And if you don't know what SEO is, it's search engine optimization. And essentially, it is just keywording your shit. Uh, Shane, who is our our wizard at that, literally, he he 
did the SEO for our podcast and it was within a week or two that we saw like a 30% increase in downloads. Um, and we went from being nowhere on the search for D and D, um, in iTunes to like top 10. And then, you know, he did some tweaking and then top six and then top three. And, uh, and the highest we've ever gotten was like top three. But I mean, it's all about that, that and ratings. If you have, if you can get those two comboed right, you'll go up to the most, um, the most shown either new or noteworthy or top podcast, or just when someone searches D and D you want your podcast to be in the first few pages, right? Like, or whatever your topic is. Um, and that's all about SEO. What about podcasting networks? Should we join or not join? Is anybody here on a podcasting network? So, so like, I didn't yeah. even know those were things. <laughs> I, I didn't they know are. that was they a thing really either. Are. Um, it is. Uh, we, Lawful Stupid was on one shortly. Um, I mean, there's a lot if you think about it. Um, uh, the X Fun. Yes, thank you. I you knew you read my mind, my boy. Um, but th what they do and what the the goal behind them is the following, right? You join this family of other podcasts, and you, the goal is that now you're part of their network so you can get listenership from them. But also, in theory, their whole goal is kind of like an HOA. If you ever have an HOA and everybody hates it, um, that's not the comparison, but HOA suck. These, what these do is basically they help you with stuff, whether they offer art or editing or, you know, exposure and in exchange, you have to do a thing for them or you have to plug their stuff or um, like you have to do a drive for them. Like you've the, the, the fun drive that the Taz do where basically it's like, hey, go donate, go subscribe. And, you know, but essentially they're going to take a cut of you, the pay you're doing. And so I'm a huge advocate of don't join a podcast network until you're mature, until you've gotten your podcast paying for itself, because all that's going to do most of the time, if you find one that just works great, awesome. But most of the time it's going to cut into the little money that you're like, people are going to be willing to give you or that you can get from sponsors or whatever. Um, and, you know, be careful with that because it can actually set you back or it can put you into things that you didn't necessarily want to do. Um, but just be upfront with whoever you're working with. Also, is the Nerd Asylum not a podcast network? Because I feel like you guys are just an <laughs> awesome community. And maybe that's, that's what it is. That's all we are, is we are an awesome community of nerds and nerdum, And we just want people to be able to see cool things and well, share that. you're birthing more podcasts than anyone I know. So I just assumed <laughs> you were about to dominate the podcast networking world and just be like, welcome to the Nerd Asylum. We own all the podcasts now. So, <laughs> I mean, as we're not asking for anything like aside, like I know for some of our stuff, we were like, you know, Hey, if you plug your stuff, our stuff, we'll plug your stuff. And that's pretty much as far as it goes. Oh, yeah. But we, you know, it's, I think, I think the hoarding around has a solid 15 active listeners, which is fantastic for it only being an episode like 20. Yeah. So. So that is a perfect point to make. It, and I don't know that you meant to, but it, it is a fucking perfect point. You're not going to have listeners to start. Be prepared for that. Don't release four episodes. Look at the two people that downloaded and then look and realize you were the downloads and stop. <laughs> Don't do that. Um, it takes time. The first year that Lawful Stupid was out, I mean, we the, the day we got 30 downloads in that first year, we were like, yes, uh, got it. And we're very fortunate that our numbers are higher now. But realistically, in that first year, we were just like pleased to break. I think it was like 4,000 or 5,000 downloads for the year or something like that. Um, you know, 
do not get discouraged. If this is something you like doing, don't let those initial numbers discourage you. Just keep working the problem, right? Keep networking, keep producing good content. Look for feedback. If like if there's bad audio, like smoke detectors going off in your episodes, <laughs> like deal with it, right? Like and then that will help grow your podcast. Don't let those numbers affect you. I miss that that member of the twenty of the lawful stupid podcast though. I, I miss the smoke detector. VP right there. I mean, there. I miss yes. the member. I don't miss I the, the smoke detector. <laughs> <laughs> um I remember my first um podcast, my only listener was my teacher. And I got really discouraged at first and he's like, Hey, next week I bet you're gonna have two listeners. It was only him again. It took almost three months for me to get any more listeners than my teacher and my new my friends and everything were there and they didn't even want to listen. They're like, Oh, you have no listeners, why should we listen to you? Oh, that's nice. And, <laughs> yeah, that's great, right? That's, that's supportive <laughs> friends. <laughs> and I I think it was when um he's in the chat came in um it was when he star and james started helping me out when i actually started getting that's when i started having listeners and everything because they started doing more of the marketing side of everything by telling people hey you should listen hey you should listen i was just more like if they listen they listen they don't they don't i feel like my wife doesn't listen to my podcast she probably Uh, tired of hearing your voice all day I'm sorry, that was really mean. <laughs> that came out way faster than I thought it would. <laughs> so, Joe has a question. Um, in a sea of content and podcasts, what have you found is the best way to find and grow your listener base? And from that, once you have listeners, what have you found is the best way to engage those listeners? I think uh, for the engaging part, uh, definitely Discord works really well f- um at least for me so because like i've mentioned i'm terrible at other social media so i'm not really on the other any other social medias um that much but i'm, I'm in discord pretty much all day um as far as finding new listeners uh it's a good question i just kind of keep putting out episodes and uh, every once in a while some new people will join the discord server um don't know that social media is helping me a whole lot so uh because we don't like i said don't use it a lot not really sure what that is um but yeah discord for engaging for sure yeah discord's huge again start a charity drive (laughs) we don't really have anybody that engages with us but except for like you guys that we hang out with but (sighs) Oh, it's, we hang out, but I, I mean, like, as far as our listener base goes, nobody nobody really hangs out with us. We try. Yeah. We're, we're available through Discord. But. Same, same with us. Is, uh, like, we have our, our fans on our Discord that listen, and they actually, it's fun, they do uh, live blogs of our episodes where they'll just, like, type out what they like their reactions to the episodes that we put out and we absolutely love it like we're just sitting in there laughing as they're doing these live vlogs it's super fun uh we found that doing contests is also uh a fun way to get people to to see you and know who you are even if you're just kind of bribing them like hey check us out follow us and we might give you stuff (laughs) I think we tried think, that too. <laughs> I tried that also. I mean, I had tickets to Panic at the Disco and no one wanted them. Like, how does no one want tickets to Panic and Fall Out Boy? Ours was Dice. Them. Like, who doesn't want Dice? What D&D enthusiast doesn't want more Dice? I would have t- happily put in for that those Dice. Right? It's very frustrating when nobody is like, I'm not going to participate in this. But it's like, but free. It's free 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 dice all you have to do is give us your address and we'll mail it to you i realize i also just touched on a very touchy topic like who wants to give out their address to a stranger on the internet (laughs) but i do that all the time it's not topic 
I, I buy from Amazon. Every stranger has my address. It's fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's yeah, that's true. How do you guys tackle nervousness um for recording or stuff like that? Coffee. Drinking. Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> like right before this, I wrote came in like came in, I'm panicking. I don't know what to do. And he's like, breathe, you got this. And that's kind of how I handled it. Yeah, uh Lance got the uh the answer right, I think, for me at least, is um drinking still even when um just recording and even when we're not twitch streaming or doing a live show. Um, so I'm just recording with my my brothers, my cousin, like my, my friends. Um, I still get nervous. Um, I don't know why exactly, but I do. Um, so that kind of helps just uh, uh, loosen up a little bit. And then also uh, something that uh, Travis McRoy actually told me in um, an interview I did for the Extra Life Hey Charity stream. Uh, this guy fucking name. Well, because it's a good point. Uh, he brought up that they do power stances before uh, they go out on uh, live shows or anything. And I started doing that before I just record, and it's actually um, I think it makes a noticeable difference. So power stances and drinking. Um, I I don't recommend drinking if you're nervous. That. That will like only uh, you will only cycle that problem long term uh, as you just like oh just a little bit more. Um, I don't I don't run into that honestly and truly. Um, I don't get nervous. I wasn't nervous when I did draw like on. I that's not something I just have built into me. But there are things you can do. Like we all do the we all do warm ups like um, typically like uh, Star will do the Oslo voice and it's just like Oslo scream. Ah! And that gets her into the character. Um, I usually say lines of characters, and that helps because once you like get into the zone, so to speak. Um, like when I was DMing for campaign one, I would just drop Bindle's voice because that always like would get me in the right mindset. Um, which, if you're in the mindset, if you're in the flow, if you're comfortable, it's much harder to be nervous or anxious. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Uh, if you're playing with with people that you you become friends with, like Dragon and A1 and Kaz, and uh, it's it's hard to be nervous. To and you you realize like you might be nervous at first, but then you realize you're you're playing D and D with your friends. You just happen to be recording it. Yeah, I mean that's pretty much how we look at it. We start off. off and you know when he when he does come in and he's ready then and we're we're all ready like that and then for the one of the games that i play in i do an accent for and i it always makes me nervous the first time i start talking in this character's voice because i'm afraid that i'm gonna mess it up so i have a couple of lines that i go through to help me get into that character's accent so that yeah, when I do start important. talking for her, it's like the same couple of lines. Yep. So it's it's always the same sentence to help me get into it, which helps a lot. Yeah, find a touchstone like that. Yep. Um. Hey, Bon, did you see the question from Zebra? Because it's in Twitch. Yes. I don't know. I'm saving it for the last ten minutes. Cool. I, it's my boy. I don't want to leave him out. Noir. Noir? <laughs> um, I forgot what I was going to say, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> so, believe it or not, still nervous. <laughs> that is. No, I think a- it's okay to be nervous. Yeah, like, that's the other thing. Don't forget that, like, if you're nervous, everybody else probably is, too. Right? Um... I, I don't recommend imagining people naked, but just remember that like everybody else is nervous too. Uh, the first time I met Adam in, in person, 
uh, we did Drawlicon live panel together, and I'm pretty sure Adam realized that like I'm not I genuinely I'm not a nervous person, but I do knee bouncing like nobody's fucking business. I'm that person that my knees always bouncing. Um, and poor Adam sat next to me, and whether he noticed or not, my fucking knee is just going the whole time, and I had to stop myself because <laughs> I'm like, oh, fucking people are next to me, and I'm recording. We're at the hey, last ten know. minutes. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> uh, we'll open the floor up for any questions for everybody. I do have a couple saved in the hopper. Uh, Inverted Zebra on Twitch asks, how much of your content hits the editing floor? Oh, oh, <laughs> everybody at once. Go ahead, somebody. Uh, so if we and have... Was... You, go. you go. You go. No, it's okay. You first. First, let's go. <laughs> uh, so when, if we record for an hour... And I try to have a timer going when we're playing D&D. &D, um, so I'll try to record for about an hour and ten minutes. And then usually when we record for an hour and 10 minutes going, I know that that's probably going to be about 50 to 55 minutes of content. I usually lose about, usually lose probably uh, like 15, 20 minutes, um, an episode of just pauses and um, be looking something up or um, some outtakes that we put at the end of just people goofing off that were funny maybe, but didn't really contribute at all sorry for the sending notes i was sending my mom I, I honestly i just thought like that was fucking brilliant i need to learn that for like moments where i like, don't want to interrupt audio i need to learn that just but then everybody else is learning it too but i thought it was fucking um, brilliant my mom and my sister are hard of hearing so i know a little sign so i just want to apologize if i did distract anyone You're fine. Um, back to the question. For hours, it depends on the podcast because, like I said, I edit two of them. Uh, one of them has a lot more pauses in it because the DM is constantly looking up different things because there's so much possibly that we can do that he's got to get to his notes for that section that we're in. It's like, okay, you guys decided to go this way. Let me get to that section of my notes. And... um sometimes that takes a couple of minutes because he takes a lot of notes um for the other one my players are very good at if i need to look something up they'll just start rping and it fills that gap so out of two hours worth of recording i usually get three 30 minute episodes and one 20 minute episode so I only lose about 10 to 15 minutes out of one, and then the other one I'll lose probably a half an hour of just gaps where people aren't talking, and I've got to cut out all that radio silence that Dwayne hates. Uh, it drives me nuts. <laughs> uh, for us, it, it we try to do 45 to an hour minute, like hour episodes. So we'll usually record for anywhere between 50 to an hour and 20 minutes. It just really depends on how much Kaz and Dragon are, are fighting with each other and how much of that I have to edit out. Uh, but, I mean, that's always the fun. I have just clips of them just arguing, which is great. But we're, we're pretty good at uh, being able to... I see Kaz typing furiously right now in the chat. I'm sorry, love. Don't mean to call you out like that. <laughs> um, yeah, I usually end up cutting out about 20, 20 to 25 minutes worth of silence, BS, going off topic. But most of it's funny, so I tend to keep that just for myself. I usually wound up editing after it's about 70% of what it, whenever I had guests on because um, we were trying to keep it where there was no cursing in the show. Like, even all my music had no cursing. Good Most of it was... 
um, is because we had viewers that were under the age of 16. And in, unfortunately, in Florida, there are laws where we have to, if you're reposting the podcast on a school server, you have to make sure it is clean. And I had to go through and do all that editing. So when seventy percent of the time when I had guests, um, it didn't matter what the topic was. I would have to go through and edit all that out, and I would lose mostly all, all my podcast. Found that having long episodes are more engaging for listeners or shorter episodes. Mm, I don't know, listeners, feedback uh, because I personally hate long episodes. I'm in the same boat. I'd li- an hour or less is where I think a sweet spot is on a podcast. Um, because, like, Critical Role, I fucking, I'm trying to get into it. But everything is four hours. And it's just, by the time I can consume one episode, seven days have passed. It's it's a lot. And I, you, I fell drug back into it. Um, that's me, though. We started out... Oh, go ahead. Oh, you first, please. Uh, we started out doing hour-long episodes, like 50, 50 to 60-minute episodes. And uh, recently, we dropped down to half-hour episodes just because we started thinking that maybe that might be easier for people to listen to on their lunch break. You know, like, oh, look, this this episode came out today. I've only, I've got, you know, I've got an hour lunch break, but I've got to eat, too. And so. Did you release twice the week after that? No, but we might. Oh, all right. Not yet. <laughs> I was just thinking, like, don't make me panic as the editor because I'm only so far ahead. Well, There's I two. agree. With you, Thirty minutes is way more consumable. Um, but you know, an hour, like, you can really get a lot done in an hour. So I was oh, like, oh yeah. well, if you release on like a Monday and a Friday or a Monday and a Wednesday, that's fucking brilliant. You double your downloads. You're ahead. You're headed to profit centers. Fuck. <laughs> oh, new awful stupid idea 20 minute episodes three times a week <laughs> <laughs> two 10 minutes uh bites five times a week this is perfect we're gonna get all the sponsors james write that down uh james, i think oh, please. <laughs> i think that about 45 like 30 to an hour is a good dosage of 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 listening time. Uh, sometimes maybe if you have like a, a special episode, like for a holiday or something, that's when you can do a like, oh, here's a, like our Halloween one was, it was a three hour. We ended up splitting it into two episodes, but it was super fun. Like it was, it was longer, but it was, it, you know, it's a Halloween episode. It was meant to be special and separate from the rest of the story. and. But yeah, no, consumably 30 to an hour for us as well. Our guest episode with Adam when he was on our show was over two hours, so we had to split it up. But you Couldn't know, when you have like, high quality guests, you got to just milk them for all they're worth. So. I think the longest podcast I've ever done was four hours, and I was interviewing another podcaster um, about social rights issues. My podcasts were anywhere between 30 minutes to about an hour and a half normally. And we didn't realize time had passed. That's how interesting the conversation was. That's good, then. Uh, you know, uh, the broadswords, um, I will give them free publicity. They do, th- or they at least used to do 30 minute episodes. And the only, the only qualm I had with that is like, you're like, fuck, man, almost like I didn't get enough content. Um, that's that's where I fear thirty minute episodes, honestly, because um, our guys can talk for twenty minutes and RP, and so you didn't do anything. You just you progressed your relationship, but nothing happened storyline wise. That's my fear. It's minute things. You got a minute to go. For <laughs> sorry, for uh, for us, we can sometimes have combat that lasts four episodes. Because they decided to take the combat to make it last the full two hours of our recording session. So I do my best to kind of edit that down as much as possible. But there's only so much you can do, especially when there's like eight giant spiders attacking four people. 
So. I recommend cinematic combat for that. Um, it is it is a thing that I came up with in Lawful Stupid to describe like a war zone, and that sped that kind of up. Um, but if the, if it makes sense that you wanted to have that fight, I totally get that. Right. That's a good idea to try to minimize because I know a lot of D and D is about the roles and about about you know your RP and everything, but there's the combat too, and it can just take so long. You can come prepared to your when like not you specifically, but if you're like a player, when it your three turns out, start thinking about what you're gonna do. Roll in advance, like you're gonna you know you're gonna roll three attacks. Roll all three at once. Go ahead and roll the damage. That way, whether you hit or not, you've already got it down, and it, it'll speed up your turn. As a GM, I thank you for saying that. I asked my players to do that, and all of them were like, but we need to share the dice. Uh, Buy more. They're I, super cheap. Give me your address. I'll send you 100 for $10. Like it's Dice should not be your limit. Well, that is the end of our time slot, so if anybody has any last-minute things to say, uh, get them out now, otherwise we can say goodbye. Thank you guys for being amazing. I'm going to take 30 seconds to plug my shit. Uh, Lawful Stupid, go listen to our thing. LawfulStupid.org. Find us on Podbean, all the other stuff by looking up D&D or Lawful Stupid. Go listen to Gullible Gazette. MinMaxMankind.org is huge. Go give to charity. And thank you for having me. Yes, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? All right. Uh, don't, love, don't forget Extra Life. We love you. <laughs> I love you. Thank you, Nerd Asylum. This is my room now, Joe. <laughs>